Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News at 7 p.m. on LA56. Breaking news, an Expo Line train crashes into a car in Exposition Park, leaving one person fighting for his life and many others injured. We're following the very latest. A wild scene in Wilmington. One person is dead, another wounded as shots ring out. Now police are trying to sort out what started it all. We're learning new details about the co-pilot in that deadly plane crash in the French Alps. What investigators discovered in his apartment. Good evening, I'm Giovanna Lotta. I'm Alex Michelson in for Jory Rand. Welcome to Eyewitness News at 7 on LA56, LA's only live local newscast at 7 o'clock. We begin with that breaking news in Exposition Park where crews are still working to clear the scene of a train crash. One man remains in grave condition. Eyewitness News reporter Leanne Souter has more on the victim's conditions and when Metro plans to reopen the area. The power of the impact is easy to see. The mangled wreckage of a Hyundai Sonata, a three-car metro train derailed, sent crashing onto Exposition Boulevard. I looked outside and I saw just the derailed car, uh, the train car in, in, the, in the car, you know, stuck. And I, I saw these firefighters coming up um, to the car, trying with the jaws of life, trying to cut off the top of the car to, to pull, the, pull the guy out. The adult male driver of the car now in extremely critical condition after investigators say he turned in front of the Expo Line train. The accident happened just before 11 a.m. along Exposition Boulevard at Watt Way, leading onto the USC campus. There's a signal for the train, and there's a signal for the car. He turned in front of the train. They were both heading east, and the car turned north against the signal. The vehicle uh, got wedged in between the pole and the, uh, and the train, causing the train to dislodge. Johnny Stevens captured the chaos from his USC dorm room, surprised by the violence. We saw the car that was smashed right into the rail, and we didn't know if the car had been sitting on the rail or if the rail derailed and went into the car, so we were just wondering what was going on. There are cameras on Metro trains, and officials say the crash was captured on video. The train operator, with 29 years of experience, was seriously injured in the crash. 21 people in all were injured. 10 were taken to the hospital for treatment. Most of the injuries, investigators say, are minor. As crews clean up the damage, the driver of the car fights to survive. The eastbound lanes of Exposition Boulevard remain shut down as crews work on clearing the scene. Metro officials say they should have the Expo line back up and fully running by 8 o'clock. In Exposition Park, Lee Young Suter, ABC7 Eyewitness News. And you can stay on top of all of the developments on the Expo Line train crash and any other news by downloading our free ABC7 app to your mobile devices. Get breaking news alerts, live video, and more right in the palm of your hand. It's available in the Apple Store, Google Play, and on Amazon. Police are trying to get to the bottom of a violent and deadly scene in Wilmington. Two people were shot. As Eyewitness News reporter Melissa McBride tells us, one of the victims was even dragged beneath a U-Haul truck. At the corner of PCH and Figueroa, a white sheet shielded the body of a man dragged by this U-Haul van. Police say the man and the driver had been shot in an industrial area about two miles away after taking part in a meeting at a business. During that meeting, a, a shooting occurred where at least two people were shot, including the person that was underneath the vehicle here. The shots fired call came in at about 8 o'clock Saturday morning on the 1600 block of Mauritania Street. Investigators don't know what prompted someone to open fire. As the U-Haul fled west on PCH, a witness called 911. The citizen alerted us and this person was, was dragged for several miles on PCH. Police say it's unknown if the driver realized he was dragging the body more than two miles. Robin Kuhn was on his bicycle when he saw first responders arrive at the corner of PCH and Figueroa. The ambulance came and uh, got the other guy out, out of the driver. He was shot in the chest and then got him out of the van. And uh, we're all standing here watching. And, and they took him to the hospital. And there's another person underneath the van right now. Police say they are still trying to sort out all the details. They're questioning one man who was present when the shots were fired. We don't know what the motive was or who exactly uh, was the shooter and why. Uh, but right now we have uh, our detective team investigating that and following all leads. Police are calling the man they've detained for questioning a person of interest. Meantime, the man who was killed has not been identified. Reporting in Wilmington, I'm Melissa McBride, ABC7 Eyewitness News. 
Investigators are working to determine what led to a deadly officer-involved shooting overnight in Oxnard. Police responded around 1 a.m. to a call of a domestic dispute between a boyfriend and girlfriend at an apartment complex along the 500 block of West Vineyard Street. Officers heard screaming in the apartment and approached the door. The man who called 911 answered, and that's when officers say the suspect attacked. Within seconds, the 26-year-old girlfriend of the reporting party advanced on both the officer and the subject with a knife, and an officer-involved shooting occurred. The shooting took place in less than 20 seconds from the time of the initial incident uh, where the first officer initially made contact. That 26-year-old suspect died at the scene. The couple's three young children in the home were not hurt. The investigation is still ongoing. I love you. I love you. I love you. Elsewhere, witnesses say it looked like a mob scene at a Downey Mall where a few hundred people gathered to see teenage skateboarder Stephen Fernandez. Police and sheriff's deputies had to control the mostly teenage crowd as they tried to get close to the 15-year-old professional skateboarder. With many teens screaming for his attention, Fernandez was escorted away. The event at Zumiez clothing store was canceled. No one was injured and no arrests were made. A major development today in a cold case stemming from the murder of a child decades ago. Six-year-old Jeffrey Vargo was killed in Pomona nearly 34 years ago. He was found strangled to death in July 1981. Police say they have arrested 53-year-old Kenneth Rasmussen in Sandpoint, Idaho for the crime. According to investigators, Rasmussen was identified as a suspect after DNA evidence linked him to the scene. He'll be extradited back to Pomona. California prison officials have paroled 74 former inmates because they were deemed too old to commit new crimes. That's allowable under the state's year-old policy. In an effort to reduce the state's prison population, federal judges told officials last year to consider releasing inmates at least 60 years old who have been in prison at least 25 years. The state has a new support program for those parolees. Governor Brown reversed parole recommendations for 20 inmates, while 17 cases are still being reviewed. The sun is setting on a beautiful day. At the busy beaches, lifeguards have been warning swimmers to be careful all weekend. Here's a live look through our Laguna Beach camera. Just gorgeous out there. High surf and strong rib currents, however, are forecast through the weekend. Rib currents are expected to be more frequent and stronger than usual. With the latest weather, here's Jonathan Novak in for Danny Romero tonight. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Giovanna. Folks, yeah, you want to be careful again tomorrow because that risk of rib currents is going to be out there again for Sunday. And it's going to be another beach day. It was really nice today. Temperatures cooled off a little bit. This is the sun setting. Our live camera HD shot from Malibu. See a few wispy high clouds out there, but overall it was sunny, 65 in Malibu. And in Laguna Beach, we were just looking over there, so I want to check in 62 degrees at Laguna Beach. And our Burbank shot 79 right now, so you guys finally out of the 80s today. Now, yesterday we hit some records. Today, no records. In fact, we cooled off about 10 degrees in the L.A. area. It was still quite mild at Big Bear. You are at 57. That's your current temperature. And around Southern California, we have now dropped, for the most part, into the 70s and some 60s, even Santa Monica in the lower. 60s. The cool down is, I won't say fu in full swing, but we've started a cool down. I'll tell you how cool it will actually get coming up in that 74 cap. All right, John, thank you. Speaking of the beaches, a swarm of bees startled beachgoers in Huntington Beach. This happened on Thursday. These dramatic photos are from Eyewitness News viewer Liz Masasuma. She says that she was at the beach with a mom's group and her kids when a lifeguard stand was being moved. Apparently, that's when the queen bee was disturbed and landed on her stroller. The rest of the hive followed. She says that lifeguards and state parks workers removed the bees and released them somewhere else. No one was hurt. Troubling new details are servicing about the co-pilot at the center of this week's deadly plane crash in the French Alps. 27-year-old Andreas Lubitz was apparently harboring a dark secret a medical condition, possibly depression, that he hid from his airline and could have kept him out of the pie cockpit. ABC's Alex Marquardt has more from Lubitz's hometown in Germany. As investigators dig through Lubitz's apartment looking for clues, they've reportedly found large amounts of medication for a psychosomatic illness and evidence he was severely depressed, according to the German newspaper Die Welt. This after German prosecutors said doctor's notes calling Lubitz unfit for work were found torn up in his trash. The deceased hid his illness from his employer and colleagues, he says. 
and the medical mystery deepening, with the New York Times now reporting that Lubitz had gotten treatment for vision problems, a serious threat to his piloting career. ABC News has not confirmed the reports. We are all five minutes to fly. Fellow German Wings pilot Frank Botan said Lubitz left a normal impression and talked about his plans for the future with Lufthansa. The families also stunned. The father of one of the three American victims said he was told not to go to the crash site because there was nothing to see. We prefer to think about those uh, 37 years that we've been together, that we've shared our lives, our experiences, our fellowship. Now, the furious speculation over Lubitz's mental health is raising new questions about the testing of pilots around the world. In the U.S., the FAA's medical requirements don't include formal psychological screening. They're not rigorous at all. There's no real guideline except for general observations and impressions. Lufthansa says they rigorously test their new recruits psychologically, but whether it's here in Germany or in the U.S., once a commercial pilot is flying, the responsibility falls on them to report a mental illness, something many people don't want to do. With the deadline fast approaching, negotiations over Iran's nuclear program intensified today and signs amid signs of discord. Uh, Secretary of State John Kerry, along with the French and foreign, German foreign ministers, met with Ter Tehran's uh, top diplomat multiple times today in Switzerland. The U.S. State Department says serious but difficult work remains to reach a preliminary deal to curb Iran's nuclear activities by the end of the month. And that would be the basis of a comprehensive agreement to be made by late June. The State Department is ordering an internal audit of its record keeping after former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton used a private email account and server while she led the agency. Clinton's attorney says all those emails are gone. Clinton says she turned over copies of all emails pertinent to her position. The Republican chairman for the House Committee investigating the Benghazi terror attacks subpoenaed the emails and Clinton's server for independent review. But Clinton's attorney says the server was wiped clean and all emails were permanently erased. Eyewitness News returns with these stories. The fight against ISIS is intensifying in Iraq. We have dramatic new images from the front lines as Iraqi troops try to retake the city of Tikrit. And while we enjoy the warmth, it's been a much different story in the East. Find out why the record snow in some places could have insurance companies paying out big bucks.
In Iraq, another fierce day of fighting as Iraqi troops push to retake the city of Tikrit from Islamic State militants. Soldiers are firing missiles, mortars, and machine guns to drive ISIS from the city, which they took in a lightning offensive last summer. The U.S. has begun a uh, aiding the final push with airstrikes, which has caused Shiite militias, who have been instrumental to the operation, to pull out in protest. Saudi Arabia says it is tracking at least two rebel groups of Yemeni Shiite rebels that are moving toward its border with Yemen. This comes after Saudi-led Arab coalition airstrikes in Yemen hit Sana'a International Airport, the adjoining military airport, damaging planes, airport infrastructure and runways. The airstrikes also hit several provinces targeting Shiite rebel strongholds. The rebel-run interior ministry says dozens of civilians were killed. In Mogadishu, Somalia, the government says 24 people were killed, including six attackers in a deadly hotel assault. While Somali troops are in full control of the hotel, Al-Shabaab, the Al-Qaeda-linked group claiming responsibility for the attack, says some of its gunmen escaped. The extremists stormed and occupied the hotel for more than 12 hours. The hotel is popular with Somali government officials and foreigners. Well, the worst of winter may be over in Boston, but a new problem is just beginning. A record snowy season is resulting in a big blast of insurance claims. Thousands of homeowners are filing claims as they begin to assess and repair the damage to their homes that they got over the winter. Insurance agents and adjusters say they've been swamped with claims and are asking for patience. Average homeowner's insurance covers most winter-related damage. This winter, Boston was dumped with a record 110 inches of snow. Wow, and we got less than what five inches, yeah. Jonathan? Something uh, like that. No, it's that's, way that's your down. Hometown, though, I, I, right? I, yeah, I want to tell you something. My my mom would send. You remember the pictures? I don't know if you guys saw yes. those pictures, mm -hmm. right? I think uh, she said that she had hired three people. It took about six hours and six or seven hundred bucks to shovel the snow off mm. of the roof. They were just charging crazy amounts. So she didn't have you there to help her. What she could have, of, you're right. She could have flown me in for less than that. And yeah. put me what son are you not helping you your mother? You should have thought that through. Yeah. You should have flown in. Yeah. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, today it was 90 in Riverside. Speaking of records, you know, we've had uh, five days in March with 90 degrees in L.A. We've never had that before, that many days uh, with 90 degrees or more or warmer. Riverside was 90. Camarillo was 72 today. That was... Uh, cooler than yesterday. Long Beach as well, Burbank, downtown, all cooler than yesterday. And taking a look at the slopes, a little bit of skiing going on there, Big Bear. Wish we could get some snow in there for you, some miracle, but it's just, you know. In the meantime, the beach is the place to be for weather like uh, yesterday, today even, with people enjoying Laguna Beach there on that time lapse. And now look at the beautiful shot here behind that 62 degrees as the sun is on its way down on what was a Mild to warm day here in Southern California. We're going to have a nice mild night. We're still at 80 in Ontario. We did hit 100 in Palm Springs. So the onshore flow that's going to be continuing to cool us down did not reach all the way, of course, that far east. But for today, it was cooler in Santa Monica and Oxnard. How much? Well, Santa Monica was actually cooler by 5 degrees. Fullerton, 9 degrees cooler. And that's right now compared to this time last night, by the way. 6 degrees cooler in Burbank than this time last night. So we didn't have a huge drop off in those temps, but enough that we are seeing cooler weather, not average, but closer to average. So why? Well, the reason why is high pressure is moving away. Low pressure is digging in here, giving us that onshore flow. And over the next few days, that's going to continue to be the case. It means some morning fog as we look at that future scan ahead for pretty much the whole forecast. So wake up, waking up tomorrow to some patchy fog and then temperatures like this, 78 on Sunday afternoon, Monday afternoon, about the same. Look for some morning fog on Tuesday, Wednesday. A little bit of a breeze kicking in mid to late week. And then we'll have Friday, it looks like right now, maybe a brief week Santa Ana event on Friday, uh, warming us back up into the mid-80s. But right now, I don't have any 90s, no huge heat waves like we've seen this season, this month. Valleys, i.e., 80 to 81 for a few days, and then you'll cool it off to just very pleasant weather come midweek. we got some breezes kicking up as well, but uh, nothing too crazy. Either way, because there's no, there aren't any real uh, storm systems moving through our area. Uh, they're all to the north, and we're going to stay pretty consistent here day to day. 70, 71, the beach. Very nice weather tomorrow, by the way. Keep in mind, there is still that elevated risk of rip currents tomorrow in the waters, so watch out for that. Mountains, 
mid 60s and you're finally getting closer to average later in the forecast 57 55 here Thursday Friday until then sunshine abound and just nice weather and the high desert looking like you've got a couple of days of somewhat warm toasty temps 84 but then you too back into the 70s closer to average by Thursday so not hot warm nice pleasant stuff guys back to you Sounds good, Jonathan. Yeah. Thank you. Google is teaming up with Johnson & Johnson to build robots that can help surgeons in the operating room. The two companies are working to engineer robotic technology that will reduce patient trauma and accelerate post-surgery healing. Google will work with uh, Ethicon, a medical device company owned by Johnson & Johnson in Mountain View, California. The financial terms of the deal are unknown. Our own health specialist, Denise Sador, spoke today at the 8th Annual Charitable Lunch and Learn event for the Ovarian Cancer Coalition of Greater California. It was held at Morton's, the Steakhouse in Inland Hills. Along with sharing current developments and testing an ovarian cancer treatment, survivors were there to share their inspiring stories. All proceeds benefit ovarian cancer reach. A great cause. And there's a new Jeep looking to turn heads with the city crowd. Still to come on Eyewitness News, we'll show you what makes this baby Jeep so unique. So, you know, more compact SUVs are a really big trend right now. Jeep has just bought a new one, and it's making its way to here via Italy. As car specialist Dave Coons shows us, it's still very much a Jeep, but will be just as home in an urban setting as on the trails. The Jeep grill is familiar. So is the logo. Even the door handles have a Jeep look. But this is a new type of Jeep, kind of small and chunky, the new Jeep Renegade. The name was brought back from earlier in Jeep's history, but the vehicle itself is all new. Jeep styling and attitude, but in a size that's the rage right now. Small, but not too small. And yes, of course, four-wheel drive is an option. While this is a Jeep, it has DNA from parent company Fiat, including the efficient four-cylinder engines. There's actually a Fiat cousin about to be launched, developed alongside the Renegade. Both vehicles are built in Italy. But Jeep's Detroit engineers were in on the vehicle from the start, making sure it looked and performed like a Jeep. Think of it as an American athlete that got formal training in Europe to perform in a world-class manner. 
With the Renegade, Jeep is hoping to cash in on the exploding trend of compact crossover SUVs. Most buyers of these have no interest at all in going off-road. Nevertheless, the Renegade is very much off-road capable, and Jeep is still very much an off-road brand. The Renegade may be a Jeep for the future, but there's no way Jeep is giving up on its past. In fact, the purpose-built Wrangler is still so popular, the factory can't keep up with demand. The Jeep's beginnings in World War II are even being honored with this Willys Wheeler edition. Even the graphics honor the past. A new Wrangler is coming in a couple of years, but there's no way Jeep is going to mess with it too much. The Renegade, in the meantime, does have the chops to go off-road and even has an optional low range for serious climbing and crawling. It also has a bit of design cleverness hidden in various places around the vehicle. Car designers call these Easter eggs, and it's fun trying to find them all. Style and a bit of whimsy, just what a new kind of Jeep needs to win hearts. Like any Jeep, it can tackle the tough stuff, but it's also right at home just looking good on pavement. Dave Coons, ABC7 Eyewitness News. We're updating our top stories at 7.30, including a Metrolink train crash in Exhibition Park that's left several people hurt. Also, an investigation continues into a fiery crash in Benedict Canyon. Find out what police are saying about the possible cause of the crash. An officer in Massachusetts is fighting for survival after being shot in the head during a traffic stop. Hear what happened just before the trigger was pulled. And investigators looking into an explosion and fire that leveled three New York apartment buildings now say a potential crime may be behind the whole thing. Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News at 7.30 p.m. on LA 56. Our top story at 7.30, one man is fighting for his life tonight after a train 
uh, crashes into a car near USC. Hello, I'm Giovanna Lotta. I'm Alex Michelson in for Joy Rand. This is Eyewitness News on LA 56, LA's only live local newscast at 7.30. The crash happened shortly before 11 this morning on the 900 block of Exposition Boulevard near USC. Officials say the driver of a Hyundai Sonata was traveling east when he tried to make a left-hand turn over the tracks, crashing into the train. First responders had to use the jaws of life to pull him from the mangled vehicle. He is currently in critical condition. The driver of the train was transported in serious condition, but has improved. Eight others were transported for minor injuries. Metro says service on the Expo line should be fully restored within the hour. Police and sheriff's deputies had to control this wild scene at a Downey shopping mall where professional teenage skateboarder Stephen Fernandez was making an appearance. With many teens screaming for his attention, the 15-year-old was, was uh, escorted away to safety at the Stonewood Center. He was supposed to appear at the Zumiez clothing store, but that event was canceled. Downey police say no one was injured and no arrests were made. A fiery crash overnight in Benedict Canyon sends two teens to the hospital. It happened about 11.30 last night at Benedict Canyon and Clearview Drives. As Eyewitness News reporter Q McCray shows us, witnesses say the cars were street racing at the time of the crash. Our camera was on scene when firefighters arrived. A Mercedes Benz on fire on Benedict Canyon Drive. LAPD investigators say racing was possibly the cause. Residents heard revving engines before the crash. I heard the sound of a car at high speed, the screech, and then the inevitable bang. I came outside and I saw the vehicle absolutely on its side. Detectives say the Mercedes and a BMW were heading northbound near Clearview Drive around 11.30 last night when the Mercedes lost control, slammed into this tree, careened across the street, and exploded into flames. The heat melted a portion of this Prius in a nearby driveway. The two 17-year-olds in the Mercedes walked away from the crash with minor bumps and bruises and a few words from neighbors. This guy needs to be in cuffs. This guy needs yeah. to be in cuffs right I, now. I should be in cuffs because he has a video of me driving 90 miles per hour. Residents told us that accident scenes like this are common in this area because drivers insist on speeding up and down Benedict Canyon Drive. They want something done about it. It's amazing to me in such a residential neighborhood on what's obviously a dangerous curvy street that people are going fast and passing each other. And so Randy Geffner jogs facing traffic, but she's still extremely cautious. Someone's going to get killed. Taxpayers like Michael Chastine have called the city for answers. There's no enforcement. We have laws. We need to enforce the laws. We need to write some tickets out here. In Benedict Canyon, Hugh McCray, ABC7 Eyewitness News. A woman shot while in the parking lot of a bowling alley in Torrance has died. Authorities say 27-year-old Mai Tatiana Connor was shot outside Gable House Bowl early this morning. Detectives say officers nearby arrived at the scene and arrested three men in connection with the shooting. Then, while driving the victim to a hospital, that car hit another vehicle. No one was hurt in the accident. A motive for the shooting is still unclear. An investigation is underway after a man is shot and killed in South Los Angeles. A party was going on in the area, but authorities do not know if the shooting is connected. There's no suspect information and officials have not released the victim's name. A decorated Boston police officer is fighting for his life today after being shot point blank during a traffic stop. Gang unit officer John Moynihan is in critical condition in a medically induced coma. He was shot just below his right eye and the bullet remains lodged below his ear. Police say that dash camera video clearly shows that his gun was not drawn as he approached the car after pulling it over. That's when they say the suspect, 41-year-old Angela West, opened fire. The officer was assisting the driver out and out provocation. As the driver is getting out of the motor vehicle, you can see his right arm come up, point bank, and shoot Officer Moynihan right below the eye. That suspect was then shot and killed after firing at other officers and trying to run away. Two others in the car were arrested. A woman driving down the street was shot in the arm, but will recover. A tragedy in the desert south of Las Vegas where two people have died in a hang gliding accident. One of them, a 12-year-old boy. This all happened yesterday in a dry lake bed near the small town of Jean. Police say the rope used to pull the glider into the air never disconnected from the tow truck causing it to careen into the ground. Witnesses raced to help the boy, but they rushed him to the hospital, but it was all too late. 
the pilot of the glider died as well. Rescue workers in New York are searching through the rubble from three collapsed apartment buildings amid reports of a possible third person missing in that massive gas explosion. Tonight, a possible theory behind what may have sparked that blast. Here's ABC's Lindsay Janet. Tonight, rescue crews and their dogs finally able to begin their painstaking search for the missing. Just hours earlier, firefighters pouring water on top of the rubble, battling hot spots 48 hours after that almighty explosion. And tonight, a growing suspicion by city officials the blast may be the result of tampering with a gas line, a potential crime. An option, and it certainly looks like it's a possible option, is that something was tapped into inappropriately. Until we get into that basement and get the whole picture, we will not be able to confirm if that theory is right. Just 75 minutes before the blast, Con Ed workers had been in the basement of the building where the explosion occurred, inspecting gas work being done and giving it a failing grade. Our folks were there, they smelled no gas at the time. This, the latest for a building that has a history of problems. Con Ed inspectors shutting down an unauthorized gas line there once before. Officials now seeking to find out who had access to that line and why. That was ABC's Lindsay Janice reporting. Two city officials tell ABC News that investigators are now looking into reports from tenants that they were told by building management to report gas problems to the landlord and not Con Edison or 911. We have much more news still to come right here on Eyewitness News on LA 56. Some unique tents are getting a new home today. When we return, we'll take you to a special adoption event for chickens and tell you why these animals are getting a new lease on life. Plus, it's art that could make you hungry for candy. We'll have details on this jelly bean art display now at the L.A. Zoo. That's trouble, sugar. <laughs> hey, folks, Jonathan Novak in for Danny tonight. Beautiful day today. Temperatures are going to continue to cool in that 70 forecast. Stick around for it. There's a delicious new addition visiting the L.A. Zoo this weekend just in time for Easter. Take a look. Artist Kristen Cummings is bringing this Grevy's zebra painting to 3D life, topping it off with jelly belly jelly beans. Zoo-goers can watch her every move as, the, as uh, she glues on thousands of different colored jelly beans to complete the 4 by 5 foot mosaic. She told us she loves to watch guests watch her work. 
A lot of times people, you know, wonder how many exactly will be on it when it's finished or, you know, what all the different colors are. Yeah, the kids especially are usually pretty excited. Of course they are. The answer, in case you're wondering, is between 12 and 13,000 jelly beans. The zebra is the last in a series of endangered species bean artist Cummings has been working on for the last 18 months to bring awareness to the amazing land, sea, and air creatures that need our help to thrive. But you can't eat them, the jelly beans, once no, they've been glued on. So no, that's a, but that's a lot of you can go buy some, I yeah, bet. I guess so. <laughs> Well, some rescued chickens have found new homes today at an adoption event in Burbank. Volunteers with Animal Place Sanctuary say that these hens were among 1,500 rescued from a battery egg farm in which they were forced to live in small cages crammed with other chickens. The SPCA teamed up with Animal Place to find the year-and-a-half-old chickens a new home. We're told these hens should continue to produce fresh eggs for several more years. There's much more news to come. Up next, President Obama is looking to get some golf in this weekend. We'll have the details on his plan to have some fun in the sun and who he's playing with. And in sports, Duck fans have reason to celebrate their team in the postseason. Earth Hour is being held around the world tonight. Earth Hour is when people turn off lights for an hour, usually at large public buildings and monuments. Several Asian nations, including Pakistan, have already taken part. The annual March campaign is an effort to get people to conserve energy and turn toward using renewable energy resources. And landmarks across L.A., including the 100-foot-tall pylons at LAX, are also going dark tonight for Earth Hour. The lights illuminating the Santa Monica Pier's Ferris wheel will also be turned off along with the lights at the L.A. City Hall. The shutdown is part of a worldwide effort to raise public awareness for energy conservation. Earth Hour starts at 8.30 p.m. 
And Jonathan Novak is standing by. He's got to look at your weather. It was a warm one today. What's oh, yeah. tomorrow going to look like, Jonathan? A little cooler. Did you like today's temps? There was about 81 in Los Angeles. We loved it. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I agree. I thought it was good. I mean, yesterday was 91. We tied a record yesterday in L.A., and we actually hit five records or broke them yesterday. Today, nope, no record-breaking heat. By the way, this is Malibu, a time-lapse. I want to show you, look here toward the end of the, the loop. You see some of the low clouds, some of that moisture moving in. That's a good sign. That means that onshore flow is increasing, and that's going to mean cooler weather. If you've been looking for cooler weather, at least that's good news. Malibu right now, well, the sun is set, but we're going to expect some coastal fog tonight to develop. 65 right now. At Malibu, and temperatures around the area are, well, at the coast, very comfortable, 63 Oxnard, 65 Santa Barbara. Head over to Long Beach, you're hanging on to that 70-degree mark. L.A., you've cooled off to 70. It's going to be a nice, warm evening. Again, though, we're going to see that fog develop tonight by the coast, just like we had this morning, actually. That's going to kind of be the case through the whole forecast. The question is, how cool will the temperatures get? Well, not, not to the cool category, but they're going to cool off into the 70s. I think high pressure is going to be moving away. Low pressure is taking its place. That's going to mean that onshore flow is going to be on the increase. That's where we get those morning clouds and the temperature is going to be going down. The future scan shows there isn't a real big change. There's no, there aren't any huge systems moving through. There's a system to the north of us come next week, but otherwise it's just, especially starting on Monday, Tuesday, what we call a zonal flow just west to east. No big arcs of high pressure or troughs of low pressure. Status quo, day to day, very similar as we go on to the extended. So for tonight, mild temperatures, morning fog at the coast, valleys about 58, mountains 34, and then that 7 forecast for LA Metro and Orange County powered by AccuWeather. Now, to, uh, today we had cooled off 10 degrees in LA. Tomorrow we'll knock off about another 3 or 4 degrees, 78 for high. Keep it right there on Monday. And about that, like I've been saying here, for the rest of the week. Now, Friday is a little exception. We've got uh, high pressure that should build in briefly here at the end of the forecast. Probably some Santa Ana's kicking up there. Nothing too crazy at this point. Valleys, i.e. 80 to 81 is your temperature for the next few days. That is warm. It is above average, but it is not record-breaking heat. Thank goodness. Beaches, another beach day tomorrow. Now, we had talked about the, uh, the risk of rip, cur rip currents. It's still in there for tomorrow afternoon, so if you're heading out to the beach, watch out if you are in the water. Probably not recommended there. We've got that risk is elevated. So the mountains, very pleasant and mild. By next Thursday, you're finally back into the 50s, 55 on Friday and 57 next Saturday. But until then, you're in the 60s. It's very warm for you guys. In the high desert, a few days of warm weather and breezy. And then you are also back closer to average by next Thursday. All right, we've got more weather coming up tonight at 11 on ABC7. Back to you guys. See you then, Jonathan. Sounds Thank good. you. President Obama may have had a little more spring in his step today. He kicked off the season with a weekend golfing trip to Florida. Today, he teed off with former NBA star Alonzo Mourning and former sportscaster Ahmad Rashad in his foursome. The president is staying at the Floridian National Golf Club in Palm City, the same spot where he played 18 holes with Tiger Woods two years ago. Mr. Obama plans to be back in Washington tomorrow night. A good day for golf, but really a good day for basketball. The Final Four is next weekend, but often this is the better weekend of action. On the line, a trip to the Final Four at Staples Center. It served up the first ticket today. Ironic, it was a rematch of the regional final in Anaheim last year, where number one seeded Wisconsin and number two seeded Arizona Remember, they met last year in a game the Cats won, excuse me, the Cats lost in overtime. They spent all summer thinking about it, about that missed opportunity and redemption. Arizona fans, though, found the sequel every bit as painful as the original. Wisconsin headed back to the Final Four with a seven-point win. We cannot show you these highlights until Eyewitness News at 11. Meantime, look at this. Notre Dame trying to upset Kentucky. Folks, it is not 1919. It is 63-62 with two and a half minutes to go. We'll have those highlights for you keep, keep watching on that. Eyewitness News <laughs> at 11. <laughs> Meantime, on the high school court, Crespi rallied to win the state championship, uh, and Sierra Canyon girls won their third straight title today. Yes, three straight for Sierra Canyon. The boys' team won the state championship yesterday, and it's the 10th time in school history the boys and girls from the same school won the state title. And get this, modern day boys looking for a fifth straight and the girls also looking for the state title today. Not much in high school basketball going on, clearly. Mark Keppel of Alhambra in the Division II state championship for the first time. Archbishop, Archbishop Mitty, excuse me, 
They are a regular there. 11th trip to the state final. Mitty with a nice bucket on the inside there. Laid out by six. Mark Keppel then scored 10 of the next 11 points. They took a one-point lead. But it's Mitty that caught fire from the outside. They erased that deficit. And Mitty wins the Division II title, 53-51. Hockey now. Ducks are officially in the postseason standing tall. Ricard Raquel scores what proved to be his eighth goal of the season. Anaheim up 1-0 against the Islanders. Tied 1-1, and that is one of the best goals I've seen in quite some time. Uh, Anaheim comes back for a 3 one lead, they win it 3-2. They'll end their five-game roadie tomorrow. Dodgers and Angels in spring training on the same field today. Mike Trout clearly in MVP form. We've seen him rob home runs before. It's only the spring, and he climbs the wall to take one away today. Dodgers up 2-1 when Eric Ibar orders out to the Sun Soakers. And if you don't think Trout is good with the glove, which we all know, he's quite good with the bat as well. Going nearly the same way. But the Dodgers rallied. Chris Heisley doubles into center field. Lars Anderson scores. And the Dodgers come back to win this thing by a count of 5-4. to Best story of the day. That's Tom Brady, the Super Bowl champion. He has in his contract, he can perform wild and acrobatic op activities off the field. You're like, he's really not going to jump. Dude's there going, dude, dude, I'd jump. How high is that, I wonder? 30 feet, Javon, 30 if you're feet. wondering. 30 feet up, 100 goes. feet down. Boom. He jumps. Wow. And fortunately, as Javon said earlier, good thing he didn't dive. <laughs> he's just right. fine. But Tom Brady, he has that in his contract that he can do that. I guess when you win Super Bowl championships, you have a little leverage. Yet another yeah. reminder that Tom Brady's life is better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> like we needed one more? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. Well, a trip to the museum is something art lovers who are bedridden couldn't imagine until now. A Seattle gallery is testing a robot that can lead, that can be their legs, eyes, and ears. Check it out. It's a robot with a wide-angle camera called Beam. Henry Evans and his wife Jane are using the beam to tour the Seattle Art Museum. It would have been impossible without the robot, but a stroke 12 years ago left Henry a quadriplegic. He's bedridden with no voice, but Henry can navigate the museum with beam by using the arrow keys on his laptop, which he controls with his eyes. Through beam, he can even talk to the museum's other visitors. It gives me the sensation of walking and allows me to socialize again. It has given me part of my life back. I think that is Could so you? liberating and incredible. And that our children got to share that experience with him as well. Look, they're following him. They want to go see where he's going to go. <laughs> Amazing. Bean costs $16,000. It lasts eight hours on a charge and just needs a Wi-Fi or a cell phone connection to the Internet. Right now, Seattle is testing it, but Beams could soon be uh, going up in giving virtual tours all over the country. Technology at its best. That's yes, definitely. Absolutely. Up next, the race is on for the top spot at the box office. We'll get a preview of the new movies looking to make their mark. And a very popular character is making an appearance in Glendale. We'll show you what had hundreds of Hello Kitty fans willing to stand in very long lines.
This weekend at the movies, we're seeing a battle that pits the sweet against the sassy. Entertainment guru George Pinocchio previews the race for first place at the box office. I'm going to see mad dog face the black. I'm sorry, what's a mad dog? You mad dog! Like a pit bull with no leash. <laughs> Two of Hollywood's most bankable comedians team up for the R-rated movie Get Hard. Will Ferrell plays a crooked financier who's convicted of fraud and given a prison sentence. He hires Kevin Hart's character to toughen him up for when he gets to the big house, unaware that his personal trainer for the prison crowd is actually a novice about all things behind bars, and he just agreed to the job because he needs the money for his family. The trick to keeping it funny, I think, is, uh, is not being afraid to push the envelope. You know, not being afraid to give people the chance to laugh at themselves for uh, overthinking certain situations. Hello? Who the hell are you? I don't think they've ever seen a white person before. Trust me, that is not the problem. Any time you're going to do an R-rated comedy, you're, you're, you're going to offend someone. You're definitely Some to. sector of something. Any time you're doing any comedy, uh, somebody's going to do Somebody's going to go. What are they going to do? Do the face. Oh, mm. my word. <laughs> On the other side of the movie spectrum, home. It's an animated story about a lovable misfit from another planet who finds himself on the run from his own people and ends up hiding out on Earth. Why are they after you? I have made a few mistakes. <laughs> he meets up with an adventurous girl named Tip who helps him learn to understand that being different is really okay. Jim Parsons, Rihanna, Steve Martin, and Jennifer Lopez all lend their voices to the story. Unlikely <laughs> friendships. Unlikely friendships. Um, it's true. It's these people who all think certain things of each other, people and creatures, and they realize that when they don't put on these presuppositioned ideas, <laughs> they can actually reveal that they have a lot in common, and they become friends. But also, it's also, about someone finding home. And home it becomes where his new friends are. Most importantly. George Pinocchio, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. An event today celebrates the life and music of Selena Quintanilla Perez. The event is being held at the Plaza de la Raza in Lincoln Heights. Fans lined up to have Selena's widower, Chris Perez, sign his book about his late wife. His book, To Selena with Love, came out last year. The book is, um, you know, it's a celebration of her life and, and, and her legacy and everything that she stood for. It's uh, uh, basically something that I had been asked for for many years was to put something out there that kind of showed her from a different aspect, a different angle, and I was uh, really excited to do it. I thought it was the right time, and uh, the response has been crazy good. Selena was fatally shot by her fan club president when she tried to fire her, alleged, fire her for alleged embezzlement back in 1995. Hello Kitty spread her message of happiness and friendship at the Glendale Galleria today. The Hello Kitty cafe truck rolled up as part of the popular character's 40th anniversary celebration. A long line of customers waited to buy everything from fresh pastries to macarons, all including unique Hello Kitty touches. Fans made sure to come dressed for the occasion, too. I'm rocking my Hello Kitty ring, I got my purse, I got my little deco Hello Kitty, and of course I have my little Hello Kitty Instacam to capture all my Hello Kitty moments. Of course, the truck made its debut in October. A permanent Hello Kitty cafe is due to open in Southern California later this year. The location has not yet been announced. Thank you so much for joining us for Eyewitness News at 7 right here on LA 56. LA 56 Weekend Theater is next. And if you love basketball, tune in to Notre Dame, Kentucky right now. Eyewitness News continues at 11 p.m. on ABC 7 and anytime on ABC7.com. And remember, you can get your news 24 hours a day on our ABC 7 Facebook page and on Twitter. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 right here on LA 56 and tonight at 11 on ABC 7. Have a great night. Thanks for joining us. Good night.